what we're doing here is being introduced to the true nature of our mind, the true nature of intelligence. Here we call it open intelligence. It's an intelligence that's open rather than closed. And it's an obvious intelligence. The introduction to open intelligence can happen very simply. If we just stop thinking for a moment, and we identify what remains when we stop thinking. There's an alertness and a cognizance, meaning the power to know. Open intelligence inseparable from our own power to know. So this open intelligence is vast and wide open, not limited within the skin line. If we just have a look right now, can you identify, is your, op is your intelligence closed or is it open? Most of us have trained in believing that our intelligence is in our brain only and that it depends on our thoughts and emotions and sensations in order to work. That's a misunderstanding. When we rely on open intelligence for short moments, repeated many times, open intelligence becomes automatic. So when you stop thinking and you identify what's looking, very simply, you acknowledge this open intelligence. Many of you here have been introduced to open intelligence and have been training up recognizing open intelligence for short moments many times. The opposite to relying on open intelligence is only focusing in on what we call data. Thoughts, emotions, sensations, experiences, perceptions, ideas, belief systems. So we've been training our entire lives to put all the attention on the description, the forever changing description and trying to base our life on the descriptions. Building an, I an identity only on the descriptions. We have an identity that we build up about our gender, about our cultural background, about our language, about society that we come from, and then we start adopting new belief systems along the way. We gather together with groups of people that we resonate with, with their belief systems, and we take those on, and then we have yet another more expansive identity. But all of this is based on data. And then, for me, I came to the training because I was exhausted trying to find out the true meaning of all my data. I came to a point where I didn't feel that my identity was what I wanted it to be. I didn't feel confident as much as I knew I could be. I didn't feel like I knew how to deal with depression or anxiety or you know, having a lot of desire to do something with my life and not being able to actually pinpoint it and make it happen. And even the times when I did make the things happen that I really wanted to, there was the sense that it's either going to fall away and then, the, and then just, you know, fearing everything that was coming in. So life in that way is very exhausting and, you know, people that come here are usually seeking for something. We're in India where the, everybody comes here for one reason or another, but some people come for spiritual seeking, other people come to just hang out and meet people, whatever we're doing. Um, but here in Balance View, we're just we're introduced to a powerful intelligence that is our own, that it gives us this ability to really live a beneficial life regardless of the data. We find that there is more and more ease and relaxation regardless of the content of data. You see, data are impermanent. Impermanent meaning they, they cannot stay around. They're, they're just fleeting, like the wind in the air is here and then it's gone immediately. The, our thoughts are just like that. They appear and then they just self-release. Our emotions, the same way. The bodily sensations, they're always changing. One moment we feel good, the next moment we may, not, we may feel not so good. So if we're trying to base 
life satisfaction, a sense of flourishing, well-being, like we've got everything in place and that we're indestructible on fleeting data, then it, it's, it just never works. So there is something about us, though, that is completely indestructible, open intelligence, timelessly free, open like a cloudless sky, that is our mind. It's clear and wide open. The data appear in, of, as, and through open intelligence. Data are only experienced due to open intelligence. Without the power to know, we don't have any data. Without data, we don't know open intelligence. Open intelligence and data are inseparable, like the sky and the color blue are inseparable. You can't take them apart. Or like the images in a mirror, or exactly inseparable from the mirror. In short moments, repeated many times, we start to recognize this. Recognizing that our identity is not only these labels that we've accumulated over our lifetime. Like right now, when you just relax body and mind for a moment, there's nothing really going on. You know, where is your identity? Your identity is as vast as the universe. We tap into that again and again. And the importance of that is that your life just becomes much easier, more comfortable in your own skin, able to contribute your amazing gift strengths and talents to the benefit of all. You know, this is what we see start to open up. So initially, though, it takes some training because it's, you know, for me to recognize that data were fleeting and my identity that I had built up was fading away. It's like, well, what is left? What is my real identity? What, how do I live in, in life now? So in Balanced View, we have the four mainstays that allows us to integrate open intelligence into our lifestyle. We have short moments many times, whenever you naturally remember to do so. The practice of short moments, it's very different than any other practice, because other practices are very set. You know, if I say, breathe deeply, you all know how to breathe deeply. If I say, stand up, you all know how to stand up. But when I say, take short moments, you're kind of wondering, well, what is a short moment? So there are a number of ways you can take short moments. For me, I just like to, for short moments, many times, stop describing everything that's going on in my experience, allowing it just to flow on by, or relaxing body and mind completely. Just total relaxation for a moment, a brief moment. We can all do that. Just complete relaxation right now. Even if there's tension, you just relax your body and mind for a moment. And when you naturally remember to do so, you repeat it. Acknowledging open intelligence, this power to know for short moments many times, rather than emphasizing all the data. So if you wake up and you feel angry, or you wake up and you feel sad, or you wake up and you feel like you just want to go back to sleep, the choices are you either indulge in all of that data, or you avoid it, or you replace it, or you let it be as it is in short moments many times. So you can just test that out. Leaving everything as it is for short moments many times. By doing this practice, I've seen that all the things that I didn't like about my life are no longer an issue. I don't have to spend any amount of time trying to do anything with the depression that I might feel on any given day. I let it be as it is. I see it's inseparable from vast open intelligence. Depression, inseparable from this primordial purity. Open intelligence is timelessly free, and so too all, all of the data. Depression, desire. Desire is inseparable from open intelligence. We've just trained to focus in on it and make a big deal out of it, trying to make decisions based on data. 
So here we come to see a very powerful way of making decisions, life decisions, using our speech, our mind, our body, qualities and activities for the benefit of all. <clears throat> and yet, it really is a gradual recognition. We can have the immediate introduction to open intelligence, but gaining confidence that open intelligence and data are inseparable, and that all data are the equal dynamic energy of open intelligence certainly takes gradual training up for this to become our lived experience at all times. It doesn't usually happen overnight or in within one open meeting. You know, I've been training up for seven years now and I see it's an ongoing training up. There's just more and more opening. Seeing subtle ways that maybe I'm still avoiding letting something be as it is. Subtly trying to make the situation look a bit different. But by taking short moments many times, showing up to open meetings, participating in trainings, relying on a trainer who has gone before us for them to share their experience, for their empowerment, and then relying on a community, it just makes it normal. We normalize everything here. You know, there's so many taboo subjects in the world that we just think need to be hidden or suppressed or eliminated that it makes life very challenging. When we're walking around and we feel shameful, trying to enjoy life when we're just focused in on the shame that we might feel, you know, that can be very distracting or it's just not fun, really. I mean, everybody feels what, a, yeah, we experience the whole array of data, shame, guilt, feeling great, feeling amazing, feeling on top of the world, feeling like a loser, everything. So the only instruction is to, for short moments, not give it all the attention. You know, it's just another data stream appearing within open intelligence. We didn't cause it to come about, so why do we need to do something with it? When you let it be as it is, it just naturally self-releases, and it may come back again. That's totally fine. You know, if you're an artist, it's, especially in this community, you know, you're, you're just given a safe environment to test out your gift strengths and talents. Most of us have, you know, you can just imagine if you share your artwork online in a non-balanced view community, and you might receive all kinds of responses, really positive ones and then lots of negative ones, too. But here in Balance View, you know, everyone will only ever encourage your, your gifts, your strengths, your talents. And everybody, this center is run by volunteers offering their service. Many people are learning th new things here, like learning how to run an AV system or how to cook or... Yeah, everything here, it's, nobody's paid here. Most of us have had to learn how to do all of this. And if we stopped at feeling shameful because we couldn't do it right, we wouldn't have this center. So it's a powerful opportunity to let shame be exactly as it is. No need to intellectually try to figure out how shame is equal to confidence. You know, this isn't an intellectualizing. How does a positive description equal a negative description? In short moments, many times, the equalness and evenness of this moment is all that is needed. You gain confidence in short moment, one short moment at a time. You can come to the trainings, and the training texts completely confirm open intelligence. They do not confirm positive, negative, and neutral descriptions. And that more and more becomes our lived experience. And the importance of the trainings is that, you know, this training works on the transmission of the trainings. The verbal and spoken word of the training, but also just the, the non-symbolic communication that you all receive every day anyway. But reading and writing is a very powerful way of, of confirming open intelligence. 
if we didn't read and write about it, it would, and just only showed up for open meanings, it just it may take a bit longer to really gain complete confidence in open intelligence. <laughs> I was just thinking of, uh, you know, when you go to school, it's, depending on what school you went to, it was usually really rigid and boring and whatever. Um, you know, and you come here, but you're not here all day in a chair. You're not, it's not like you're waiting for recess. And the results are so profound in this teaching that it, it just makes sense to give it a try. Resistance is such a powerful data stream to resolve. I mean, it unleashes your complete beneficial potency. That's all resistance is. It's powerful energy to contribute in so many ways that we didn't even think possible. Uh, you know, many people here probably have resistance to coming and sitting in these plastic chairs and thinking about being at the beach. And, but the results are what keeps people coming back. You know, if you really want to make positive social change, we do it with something that really works. We find that this training really is having a profound effect in our families, our friends, our colleagues around the world. In my own life, this is the only thing that has given me the results that I was looking for in all fields of my, of my life. Relationships, feeling a sense of purpose, feeling healthy, feeling like my mind is actually clear for the first time, regardless of what I'm thinking. You know, I, having friends all over the world rather than just a close group of friends in, in one place. <laughs> 